Learning Objectives After completing this digital module, learners will be able to Understand the concept of employment generation and its relation with country's GDP. Learn how the worker population ratio is useful to understand the proportion of population that is actively contributing to the production of goods and services of a country. Understand the differences among regular salaried employees, self-employed and casual wage laborers in employment scenario. Learn the causes why the self-employed and casual wage laborers are generally found more in rural areas than its urban counterpart. Understand the divisions among three sectors of economic activity as primary, secondary and service or tertiary sectors. Learn how after 1990s, at the time of economic reform in India, the employment growth started declining and reached the level where India was during the early stages of planning phases. Understand about the distribution of workforce showing that while in 1972-73 about 74% of workforce was engaged in primary sector but in 2011-12 this proportion declined to 50%. Learn about the vulnerability of casual waged workforce and self-employed people when casualization of workforce continues in high pace in India. Workers and Employment Employment is a relationship between two parties where one party, which may be a corporation, for profit, not for profit organization, cooperative, or other entity as the employer, and the other is the employee. Employees work in return for payment, which may be in the form of an hourly wage, by piecework, or an annual salary depending on the type of work an employee does or which sector she or he is working in. Employment is typically governed by the specific employment laws, regulations or legal contracts. Gross domestic production or GDP means the total consumption or production within the geographical border of the country. Thus, it implies that employment could or might increase with a higher rise in GDP because of, say, increased government spending. Who are the workers? The workers in India refer to the employment in the economy of India. In 2012, there were around 487 million workers in India, the second largest after China. Of these, over 94% work in unincorporated unorganized enterprises ranging from pushcart vendors to home-based diamond and gem polishing operations. The organized sector includes workers employed by the government, state-owned enterprises and private sector enterprises. In 2008, the organized sector employed 27.5 million workers, of which 17.3 million worked for government or government-owned entities. The Nature of Employment in India Till today, the large proportion of workers is engaged in agriculture, about 49%, which contributes a mere 14% to the GDP. In contrast, the service sector, which contributes 58% of the GDP, barely generates 27% of the employment. and the share of manufacturing in both employment, 13% and GDP, 16% is much lower than in East Asian and Southeast Asian countries. Workers' Population Ratio in India Employment to population ratio is the proportion of a country's population that is employed. The people aged 15 and older are generally considered in the working age population. According to the 5th Annual Employment Unemployment Survey 
worker population ratio WPR was estimated in India to be 47.8 percent. Thus, 47.8 percent of the persons aged 15 years and above were reported to be employed during this period. Different levels of participation of people in economic activities. There is a huge variation in the levels and trend of female labor force participation within regions in India. In 2009-10, Eastern states showed the lowest overall participation rate of 22.6%, while the southern states were more than double at 51%. Compared to the rest of the country, women in southern states enjoy a higher status with fewer restrictions on mobility, which could have implications for women's ability to engage in productive work. Self-employed and hired workers Among workers in rural areas, 54.2% are self-employed, as against 41.1% in urban areas and 38.6% work as casual labor as against 17.5% in urban areas. Grossly, the Indian economy is characterized by the existence of the vast majority of informal or unorganized labor employment. As per a survey carried out by the National Sample Survey Organization, NSSO, in 2009-10, the total employment in the country was of 46.5 crore comprising around 2.8 crore in the organized and the remaining 43.7 crore workers in the unorganized sector. Out of these workers in the unorganized sector, there are 24.6 crore workers employed in agricultural sector, about 4.4 crore in construction work and remaining in manufacturing and service. Employment in firms, factories and offices In primary sector, agriculture and mining or querying are the prominent economic activity. Almost two-thirds of the total workforce earns their livelihood through farming and other allied sectors like forestry, lodging and fishing which accounts 18% of the GDP. These sectors provide employment to 60% of the country's total population. About 43% of the country's total geographical area is used for agricultural purposes. After independence, additional areas were brought under cultivation and new methods. Practices and techniques of irrigation and farming were introduced by the government. Shift to primary to secondary sector. Due to uncertainty in agriculture and the presence of many landless agriculture laborers in the sector, it has been seen that the shift of workforce happens from agriculture to secondary sector, like in manufacturing, electricity, gas and water supply and construction industries. Many of the contractual laborers whom we see in the construction sites in the urban areas in private and even in governmental projects. Most of them are the laborers who left agriculture and came in the cities for alternative employment opportunities. Service sector as the highest GDP earner in India. The services sector is the key driver of India's economic growth. The sector is estimated to contribute around 54% of India's gross value added in 2017-18 to and employed 28.6% of the total population. India's net services exports during reached US dollar 57.60 billion April to December 2017. It includes trades, transports, and storages and services like banking, finance, telecom, and else. Out of overall services sector, the subsector comprising financial services, real estate, 
and professional services contributed to US dollar 305.8 billion or 20.5% to the GDP. The subsector of community, social and personal services contributed US dollar 188.2 billion or 12.6% to the GDP. Growth and Changing Structure of Employment The major objectives of economic reform is accelerating growth and expanding the employment opportunities. Despite NSSO's recent estimation with respect to its employment and unemployment survey brings out a virtual stagnation in the employment growth indicating jobless growth in the Indian economy. These results have raised a concern over the employment situation among the policy makers, academicians and development activists. Census classifies workers into two categories, that is main and marginal workers. The analysis of census data shows that during the last two decades, that is 1991 to 2011, the rate of growth in marginal workers is higher than that of main salaried workers. The rate of growth in main workers had decelerated during 1990s when compared with previous decade 1980s, whereas among marginal workers it accelerated during the same period. Trends in Employment Pattern in India the important trends as emerged in the workforce participation is that the rates for females are significantly lower than that of males in rural areas, while more than half of all the rural males versus the corresponding percentage for females was between one-fifth and one-third by various measures. Secondly, the daily status participation rates were the lowest and the usual status measures of WPR were the highest for any particular year with the weekly status falling in between. Thus, the self-employment continues to be the sustaining employment provider in large areas of the country. Casualization of Workforce Between 2004 and 5 and 2009 to 10, the number of casual workers grew by 21.9 million, while growth in the number of regular workers nearly halved, that is, compared with the period between 1999 to 2000 and 2004 to 2005, to 5.8 million. The number of the self employed dominated by agricultural workers declined by 25.1 million. Analysts say that this is being caused by the country's archaic labor laws and by the partly exclusive nature of economic growth. Informalization of Indian Workforce In 2012, it was seen that among 30 million formal sectors workers in India, 18 million worked in the public sector. Formal, non-form payroll from a social security perspective is estimated at about 7.5 crore. The formal non-form payroll from a tax definition is estimated at 12.7 crore according to a recent survey as expressed. These estimates are for formal non-farm payroll ranging from 31% in case of social security defined formality and 53% in the case of tax defined formality. Workforce employed in informal sector. Ever since the initiation of the liberalization policies in the early 90s, informalization of jobs has become a matter of concern. Growing competition combined with increased market opportunities and limited resources have led to the emergence of an informal economy. The predominance of the informal sector has led to a situation of the benefits of economic growth being concentrated among few with a growing proportion of the population living as working poor. But it is 
the unorganized sector, the share of formal employment marginally increased from 0.3 to 0.4 percent and that of informal employment declined marginally from 99.7 to 99.6 percent. On the whole, the number of formally employed increased from 33.41 million in 2004 to 2005 to 38.56 million in 2011-2012, while informally employed increased from 426.20 million to 435.66 million during this period. Ahmedabad Textile Mills A Case Study Formal Becomes Informal About 50,000 textile mill workers in Ahmedabad city were laid off during 1990s. The move to obtain compensation and rehabilitation for these workers floundered on the weakness of the struggle. As number of workers who were available for pressing their claims and taking to some kind of activism dwindled. The motivation of leaders declined and the struggle slowly frittered away. Unemployment According to NSSO, the unemployment can be defined as the persons who, owing to lack of work, had not worked but had either sought work through employment exchanges, intermediaries, friends or relatives or by making applications to prospective employers or had expressed their willingness or availability for work under the prevailing conditions of work and remuneration are considered as seeking or available for work. Persons, on the other hand, who were seeking and or available for work for relatively longer period of the 365 days preceding the date of survey are considered usually seeking and or available for work. How unemployment is measured in India? The National Sample Survey Organization, NSSO, provides three different estimates of employment and unemployment based on different approaches or references periods used to classify an individual's activity status. These are usual status approach with a reference period of 365 days preceding the date of survey. Current weekly status approach with a reference period of 7 days preceding the date of survey and current daily status with each day of the 7 days preceding date of survey as the reference period. Different types of unemployment in the country Among different types of unemployment, we find disguised unemployment where part of the labor force is either left without work or is working in a redundant manner where worker productivity is essentially zero. On the other hand, the seasonal unemployment in agriculture is a normal condition in India. In 1993-94, the gross irrigated area as a percentage of gross cropped area was only 36%. This implies that farmers cultivating approximately 75% of the land remain involuntarily unemployed for four to six months unless they find some temporary employment in this period. Government and Employment Generation Erstwhile, a labor law which was later renamed as the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, Manrega, which aims to guarantee the right to work for all. It aims to enhance livelihood security in rural areas by providing at least 100 days of wage employment in a financial year to every household whose adult members volunteer to do unskilled manual work. The Act was finally accepted in the Parliament and commenced implementation in 625 districts of India. Based on this pilot experience, Narega was scoped to cover all the districts of India from 1st April 2008. In its World Development Report 2014, the World Bank termed 
it a stellar example of a rural development. Another aim of Manrega was to create durable assets such as roads, canals, ponds, wells. It was fixed that the Manrega is to be implemented mainly by Gram Panchayats. Labor intensive tasks like creating infrastructure for water harvesting, drought relief, and flood control were also preferred. Direct and indirect employment opportunities. For an example, if an iron and steel company undertaken by the union government increases its productivity, it will require to hire some employees to look after this additional workload, which will be called direct employment under public sector. Due to this increment in productivity, the private organization engaged in dealing with the government-run firm will also recruit people to look after the buying and selling in between public and private organizations. This is indirect employment generation by the government. Other employment generation programs. In order to help in rural employment generation, rural health development works, road building, several other houses development have also been performed by the government to facilitate rural people to get their daily wages. Summary Let us summarize what we have learnt. During 2011-12, India had about 473 million strong workforce, of which most of them were resident of rural India. During 2011-12, the worker population ratio for men was 54.3 in rural area and 54.6 in urban area. For women, they were 24.8 in rural and 14.7 in urban population. In entire workforce in India, self-employed are 52%, casual laborers are 30% and regular salaried employees are 18%. 64% of workforce is engaged with primary sector in rural area, while 24% of workforce with secondary and 27% is with service sector. During post-reform period, India has been witness to employment opportunities in the service sector. These new jobs are found mostly in the informal sector and the nature of opportunities being also mostly casual. Government is the major formal sector employer in the country. Disguised Unemployment is a common form of unemployment in rural India. There has been a change in the structure of the workforce in India. Through various schemes and policies, the government takes initiatives to generate employment directly and indirectly.